We told you earlier this week about a team from Tulsa's First Baptist Church that headed on a mission trip to the Philippines. Tulsa's investigative reporter Jana Clark went with them. You might remember the series of stories she brought us last year when she went to help girls rescued from sex trafficking and abuse. This time, Jana took her teenage daughter on the trip. It's her Fox 23 investigation. My 14-year-old daughter and another teenager from our church decided to go on our mission to the Philippines. Since I've been there, I knew this would be a life-changing experience for them, and they would have a different perspective than the rest of us. They're the same age as many of the girls we went to help. Both 16-year-old Sophie and my daughter, 14-year-old Claire, didn't know what to expect. I'm mostly excited, but there are little parts of me that are nervous. I don't know. I'm pretty nervous. They and the rest of the team from Tulsa's First Baptist Church traveled more than 20 hours to the Philippines. Then we headed to see the girls we came to help. Many of us had come before, but for Claire and Sophie, this was a culture shock. The culture here is so much different. Mm -hmm. The traffic was crazy. I couldn't believe it. The paint on the roads is just paint on the roads. It's a suggestion. Another thing that I noticed about the traffic here is like they're so close together. We were just amazed because the motorcycles, they get so close to you. Riding behind them, they're like this far apart from our van. It's insane. Did you notice about stoplights? Yeah, there weren't any. When we pulled in, Claire and Sophie got their first look at the village and the 57 girls who call it home. I was really excited just to get to meet all of them. And the second I stepped off the van, I got emotional seeing these girls. I mean, they're just wondering. All the girls survived sex trafficking and abuse. Some here as young as five, like this little girl who got really attached to Claire. Oh, you're welcome. These girls have been through something that I can't even wrap my head around. Is it hard to think about what they've been through. Yeah, I think one of the hardest times was it was the first day we got here. And we went to church with them on Sunday. And it was just like some of the things that the pastor was talking about in the songs. I immediately thought of like stuff that they had been through. And I about started crying, but I stopped myself. I didn't want to cry in front of them. Claire and Sophie worked alongside the team to spruce up the house and spent lots of time with the girls. You see this? They did arts and crafts with them, played sports like softball and volleyball, and just talked to them. What do you think of the girls? They're so sweet. These girls are some of the happiest girls I've ever met. I mean, they're so crazy for everything. The girls' home is run by the nonprofit First Love International. It's a faith-based program called the Butterfly Project. Some of them have come up to me and said, this was the first place I learned about God. Just watching the way God moves here, watching the way not only they love God, but they love each other. Some of the girls are younger, but many are teenagers, the same ages as Claire and Sophie. I don't know if I've taught them things. I hope I have, but they for sure have taught me some things. Eli Ingram is Sophie's dad. He's come on this mission trip many times. What do you think about the fact that our girls have come here. It's just going to be a big effect in their lives. How do you think Claire and Sophie have done? Oh, they've done wonderful. They get to help. They've built relationships. They work harder here than they do in America. And they don't complain about it. Do you think this is going to change our daughters? Oh, absolutely. It's so much different from like our everyday life. And like, I mean, I wake up, go to school, I go home and I don't have to worry about anything. This man, Turing, works at the girls' home as a handyman. When a group of us walked to visit his home, Claire and Sophie came too. Okay, here we go. They got to see up close and personal how most families live in the Philippines. Hi. Hello. It's so different when you experience oh, yeah. it firsthand. The homes here are built on the side of a mountain. Wow. Uh, yeah. What a path. It's so steep. I wonder how many people have, like, fallen down this. They have to walk through this. I know. To get to their house, I don't know, I know. every day. You might need to tighten these chacos. Homes close together. Oh my gosh, look down. Made of whatever families can find. I really, truly think it's stuff that they find on the side of the roads. Mixtures of different things like wood, bricks. And we saw an awning covering of um, rice, like a bag of rice. When you go home, I mean, you don't think about what's holding your house together. Yeah. No. And these people worry about it every day. Is that just dirt holding it up? That could fall at That's any second. They have to keep adding stuff, especially like to the structure, because a lot of their houses are really like tipping sideways because it's on the side of a mountain. 
If one of those sticks breaks, they're in trouble. Is this their house? Yep. Oh. He's adding on. We're here. At Turing's house, my mom gave his family a photo album. Since she started coming here in 2019, she's taken a photo of his family every year. People here can't afford things like family photos. He has two boys and three girls, so five kids, plus his wife and him. That's seven mouths to feed. Claire and Sophie saw inside Turing's home. I think it was nicer than it's, some of the other ones there, yeah. but it was still unbelievable. It's dark and it's so hot. You think about how hot it gets and there's no AC and they don't have electricity. Bye. This is a typical neighborhood in the Philippines. I just realized this is a neighborhood. Look at Look at the baby. Sophie, What? They, they have a whole basketball game down there. That's oh my crazy. gosh, that's so cool. There's so much like trash everywhere. Trash, yeah. poop, animals, I mean everywhere. You can't walk anywhere throughout that neighborhood without seeing a puppy or a cat or a chicken. Oh, it was oh, a baby, oh it was my a gosh. baby puppy. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a chicken. The kitties. Claire and Sophie didn't realize at first the animals here aren't pets. Cats eat rodents and the dogs act as alarms. The dog is sitting on... Oh my gosh, it's arm is hurt or something. Oh my god, It's so scared. The ones that were on leashes, the leash was about this long. It's another puppy. It's another puppy puppy. There's a whole litter. 90% of the girl dogs that I've seen here are, have puppies. Yeah. Like I mean, they all have puppies. The only dogs that I've seen that aren't pregnant are males. I think they can't like afford to vaccinate or fix the animals. Bye. Families getting by, just surviving. It's really eye-opening. People live like that. Do we go this way? Yeah, that way. You put yourself in their shoes for a second and you think, how do they wake up every day and they do this every single day? It's their normal. It makes me grateful for the way I live, but it really makes me grateful for the way those girls live. I mean, knowing that they're yeah. there and knowing that they're safe. Back at the village, it will be hard to say goodbye to these girls. I don't want to say goodbye. I love these girls. Claire and Sophie also know they're changed because they came here. Yeah, I think so. There's, there's a couple of things that I'm so much more grateful for that we have that I take for granted. What do you think you take for granted? Definitely family, I think. The kids here don't have that. It really puts into perspective how well I have it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing, it really is. I am so proud of both of them. They stepped up in a big way and the girls really loved Claire and Sophie. They both told me they hope they can go back to see the girls. Covering news that matters, Jana Clark, Fox 23 News. And Jana is working on her next story in the series, The Big Picture. See the whole team at work in the Philippines, including Jana, and how they helped all those girls who have been through such just horrific situations. Part three of the mission to the Philippines will air next week. Do you have a tip or issue that you think Jana Clark should investigate? Let us know. Email fox23investigates at fox23.com or call 918-388-5354 or search Fox 23 Jana Clark on Facebook.